Okay, that's fine. Anyways, um, hello everyone. Welcome to Battlecode 2024. Um, this is our first lecture, our kickoff. So in this today we'll be just revealing the game. We'll talk about a little bit about what's going on, what you need to expect, how to get started, and answer any questions. Um, let's jump right into it. So the, the name for our game this year is called Bread Wars. And uh, you'll see why very shortly. So first thing, welcome to Battlecode. We are MIT's largest AI programming competition. Um, basically teams of one to four compete in uh, a Java tournament um, where everyone works to program bots to play the game that we've created. Um, as I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with, it's a six unit IAP class. If you guys have not registered for that yet, make sure you go do that. Um, in order, to, It's pretty easy to pass. All you have to do is make a bot or write up a strategy report. So make sure you guys do that. And make sure you guys register right away. So play.battleco.org is our website. That's where you'll make an account where you can submit your bots and play against other people. So feel free to do that at the end. We'll have the links at the end or do it now while you have some time. Um, uh, brief, here's our sponsors for this year. So brief shout out to them. Um, they've helped us a lot. We would not be where we are today without our sponsors. So thank you a lot to them. Um, here's our lovely team of developers for this year. So. We're a pretty small team, as you can tell. We worked very hard to bring the game this year. Um, let's see, so let's talk a little bit about logistics. So lectures will be every weekday for the first two weeks of IAP. So same time, same room, seven p.m. in this room. Um, live streamed every week. This is uh, it says Twitch on here, but we're doing YouTube this year. So um, you can find our YouTube account, YouTube.com/slash at MIT Battlecode. Um, and so if you can't make it, feel free to watch them online. They're going to be recorded. And so not, not required attendance, but we'll have dinner every week. Um, and then after the lectures, so seven to eight, usually they run, we'll have in-person office hours from eight to 10, where we'll be here answering any questions and helping anyone with their code if they need it. And as I mentioned, 16 unit IAP class. So if you're an MIT student, make sure you register for that, um, before it's too late. Um, and there's, so there's two ways to pass the class for credit. Essentially, we'll create a reference player that we determine is going to be like the minimum bar around week three. And in order to pass, you have to write a bot that is able to beat this bot. Um, alternatively, if you are unable to achieve this milestone, that's okay. We welcome you to write a two-page report which explains your team strategy and approach to the game as an alternative for beating our bot. Um, so let's talk a little bit about tournaments. So we run multiple tournaments throughout IAP. You're not required to participate in any of them, but you might as well because it's a chance to win prizes. So each tournament has their own set of prizes and Sprint One is our first and it's open to anyone. So Sprint One is open to anyone who's registered and we have a cash prize for that one. That one is coming up next Tuesday. So keep that in mind. Um, the way we run it is that you submit your code to our website and we lock you into a certain submission by a submission deadline for that tournament. So this all this information is on our website, battlecode.org. We have a schedule page, which has information about when tournaments are, when you have to submit code by, all this kind of stuff. Then towards the end of IEP, we have our qualifiers. So when you register, you have to indicate which teams you're qualified for. So if you're an international student, you, you, write, um, you indicate international. If you're an MIT student, you indicate that. Um, we have a special category for MIT first-time participants. So if you're new, we have a special category just for you to help you get started. Um, and then we have the U.S. qualifiers. Um, and we also have a tournament for high school students. Obviously, it doesn't apply to you guys, um, but we do run that, and it's pretty cool. And then we have our final tournament. So if you guys qualify, um, we, usually switch about, we usually switch up how many top teams are invited to the tournament every year, but it's around um, 8 to 16. We invite you to our final tournament dinner. Sorry. Um, and that dinner takes place right before the final tournament. So if you guys are finalists, we invite you there. There's sponsors there, other competitors. We fly in competitors from um, around the country because anyone's allowed to participate. And then finally, our final tournament is the day after that. And that's where we run all the matches and we have a cool event in, um, we're doing it in Kresge this year. So we'll have a big event in Kresge, lots of food, lots of people. The sponsors will be there um, and it'll be very fun. So make sure you guys stick around for that. Um, so. How do we? How do you guys um, get some practice for making a bot? So like I mentioned, we will release the official reference player around week three of the competition. So that's the bot you'll actually have to beat in order to pass. And we release the code for you to look at so you can see what's going on. Um, 
Also, you can scrimmage against other teams. So as I mentioned, you can submit your bot to our website and this allows you to play against other teams automatically. So that's a good way to have free um, opponents to practice against. And you can you can watch the games and see how to improve your strategy and this kind of stuff. Um, so we have this internal ELO system, which basically determines who you get matched against. So basically what that means is the better you're doing, you'll be placed against better opponents. And if you're doing worse, you'll be placed against people who are at a similar skill level. So nothing is too unfair. And as I mentioned, match replays can be downloaded for analysis. So battle code is both an engine which actually runs the game, and then we have a separate client component which takes those, the engine will output replay files, and then the client is responsible for visualizing them. So you can take a replay file that you run online, download it, visualize it, see what's going on, see what teams are doing what, and update your strategy accordingly. All right, let's get a drum roll for the reveal of this year's game. Red Wars, yes. You already saw that, I know. Let's go. Tree, would you like to do the honors? Uh, this is kind of the preamble to intro Red Wars. So, flowers blossom and snowfall melts. Civilization is eroded away after millennia, giving way to a beautiful oceanic world teeming with life. Hiding away on an unnamed island is a lake where a great city once stood. For thousands of years in this lake, the last remaining magical and mutant robots of the past have slowly evolved to suit their surroundings. But where could they be? Amongst the chatter, a pair of loud quacks ring out. So essentially, in this world, food is pretty scarce and it's filled with only ducks. So it's your job to defend your duck faction's bread and also defend it and fight the other team and take their bread as well. So you can build traps, dig water channels, and hide your bread, and you'll be fighting one-on-one -on -one against an enemy faction. So if you capture all of their bread, then you win and vice versa. So the, we'll just be going over some of like the basic map elements that you'll be dealing with when building your bot. So the first one is a dam. So it's essentially a barrier that exists for the first 200 rounds of the game. And it'll keep the two teams separate, so you won't be able to attack the other team and they won't be able to attack you, so that both of you can complete kind of your setup and setting up what your map will look like for once you both start attacking each other. And after the first 200 rounds, it'll be removed and won't return. You'll also have three spawn zones. So these are essentially where all of your ducks will spawn. And they're all a three by three, just like nine tiles. And there'll be three sets of them just automatically on the map. So your bread will also automatically be placed here, but you can move that during setup. The crumbs are what are essentially gonna power everything that you do. So on the map, you'll see them and they'll boost your team supply of crumbs, but you'll also gain them passively as you're just going around your ducks are attacking and building. And you can build these crumbs to build traps and dig water, as well as fill. So water on the map is a tile that the ducks can't go over, but ducks can dig in order to create like areas where there are water. So no ducks can go over those areas, but ducks can fill water and it covers it with land and removes the water that was previously there. Walls are also impassable barriers and you can put place them as, or they're fixed as part of the map, and they just won't change as you go. So your only resource throughout the game will be the crumbs that you'll gain passively and can also find as boosters. Again, you can use them to build traps, to dig for water, and also to fill. So these are the robots that you'll have. The base duck is like your only unit that you'll begin with. You'll always only have a maximum of 50 ducks, and any other variants are upgrades of this base duck. So as they perform specific actions over and over again, they'll gain proficiency in those actions and eventually will specialize in one specific action over the others. And after being removed from the game, they can respawn in the spawn zone after a certain amount of rounds. So this is an example of one of the specialized ducks, the builder duck. So once the base duck becomes high enough skill in building, it'll be a very high level for building. It'll be more efficient at building compared to one of the base ducks 
but can no longer be specialized in anything else. Similarly, the attack duck will be more adept at attacking uh, versus doing anything else once it gets to a high enough level. And lastly, the healer duck is able to heal and will have greater benefits for healing, but cannot do any of the other things as well as those specialized ducks. These are examples of the traps. So the traps can be built by the ducks using crumbs. And the first one is a water trap. Essentially, when it's set off by another duck, it will dig water in like a radius from the trap. And like those blocks can no longer be traversed by the duck. The next one is a stun trap. That one will stun all enemy ducks within a certain radius. And the last one is the explosive trap, which will harm all enemy ducks in a certain radius. And then here's your bread, which is essentially like your flag that you're protecting and also the flags that you're trying to obtain from your opposing team. There are also global upgrades. So after 750 rounds, each team will get one upgrade point and they can choose which of these to do. You can only activate each one once and the game will end automatically after 2000 rounds. So you can only get a max of two. Yeah. Thank you, Tariq. So yeah, that's just a basic overview of some of our elements. Um, we have a very in-depth specification that we create every year that has very specific details about what um, like edge cases, specific numbers, this kind of stuff that we have every year. So on our website, battlecode.org, and you'll see on your competitor dashboard, we have this link so you can go take a look at it yourself. Um, if you're curious about any, if you have any more like in-depth questions, take a look there first. And if anything's still unclear, feel free to ask us um, on Discord or over email or anything like that. Um, so how do you get started? So don't feel like you have to rush and rile this down right now. We have this all online, but basic idea is you install Java JDK and you go to our GitHub page where we have the Batico 24 scaffold, which essentially is like your tool to getting everything set up very easily. Um, so go to check out this GitHub page. We have this again linked on our website. You'll see it everywhere, um, but you get that downloaded. Um, you run the setup and there's a readme in there that'll tell you exactly how to proceed. And again, if you have any questions, reach out to us on our Discord channel or on email or any sort of communication platform. And please report bugs, especially because we've redone the entire client this year and it's going to be a lot better, but there is potential for bugs. So if there's anything that comes up, please let us know right away. Um, but yeah, so, and make sure you guys register. So in order to get access to all this information, register on play at That's where you'll be able to submit all your bots and scrimmage against other opponents. Um, and then finding a team. So you can participate by yourself or up to four people. Um, if you're interested, we have in our Discord a, a channel for finding teams. So feel free to do that or talk to amongst yourselves to find a team. And we have some voice channels if you guys are, are, are interested in that, but not important. And uh, yeah, thank you so much. Um, we hope you guys have a good season and like I mentioned, we're running lectures every day for the next two weeks. So hopefully we'll see some of you tomorrow. tomorrow. What is that? Tomorrow. tomorrow. So tomorrow is um, setup slash intro to Java. So if you guys need help with setup or, or what's what, want a more like live explanation of how to get started and how to get started with our stuff and with Java, we're going to do that tomorrow. So if you guys feel lost at all today, just hold on tight for tomorrow and we'll get into that for you guys. But yeah, that's all. Thank you for coming. Feel free to grab our pizza on the way out. Thank <laughs> you.